One Owner Car Guy, OneOwnerCarGuy.com. And we've done the wash, we've done the wheels, and we've done all kinds of stuff to this Thunderbird. Now we're gonna do the buffing, um, actual polishing of the paint. And as you can see, the car is very faded. Make sure and click in the, I'll put before this some links to the detail and wash and all that. Um, I'm gonna show you a quick up close on the paint. And just make sure and add your comments down below, like, subscribe, and all that. I've got lots of videos on detailing, and I've got lots of classics for sale. Plain and simple, about 150 of them right now to be exact. Not just the ones you see, I can count two. There's only about 40 here. So, here's the Thunderbird. It's a 93 Super Coupe, supercharged. And what we're gonna do on this one today is actually a wool pad. Can you grab one of the foams, Nick? And I'll show you the foam in case you're not in tune with what it is. And a rag that we're gonna use to wipe it down. And so this wool pad, you've gotta figure is very, very aggressive. Um, unless you're doing something that has very messed up paint, you really probably don't need an aggressive, aggressive pad like this. And to give you an idea, can I get that nice green one in there? Or something, e even something just a little less um, hard. To give you an idea, you can see this paint's all faded, faded, faded. This is not. We just did this one as well. And I would not put a wool pad to this. I just wouldn't. You can see all the reflections and stuff. And actually, um, Nick just got done hand polishing this out a little bit. And I would not put a wool pad on this. It'll leave you with so many swirl marks, it's pathetic. Now, on the other hand, my baby here, that is faded, 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 I would wool pad the hell out of this. So, just as a kind of difference, you can see all the clear coats burn off. I can't wait to get this thing going and leave it and just drive it like this to where everybody thinks it's a piece of junk and then all 670 horses just blows them off the road. So, here's your foam pad. And there's a couple different grits of this. I would say this is probably about, I don't know, 1500 like maybe maybe 4000 grit 3000 grit and this is like 7000 grit and then there's another one that's like 10000 I don't know let's just say this is the grittiest of the gritty okay here's our paint I'm going to hand the camera off to Nick and I'm just going to start and kind of half this thing right now to where you can see what we're doing and I'm going to take a test shot Nick got to be able to get right up on this to where I'm not splashing on him I don't want to wax my camera all up. So, with that in mind, here we go. And that. show right up on it when we're doing it, I guess. On your first run through. Well, I gotta get something. And I just put that face down. God dang it. <laughs> and I have talked before about putting these face down like this. You don't do it. Don't put them in the dirt. But if you do, it's not the end of the world either. <clears throat> Especially on a car like this. Clean the thing up a bit. Get yourself a wrench. And they actually make a spur for this that makes it way easier. We don't need no stinking spurs. You can see what's happening here. And I'm sorry. But there ain't no dirt sticking to this thing. If I got anything in it when I touch the ground, it's gone. So I'm very confident, number one, now that I've got a cleaner pad, number two, there ain't no dirt in it. Now it shouldn't take a whole lot of this, plain and simple. I've already shaken it up. Like I say, your first time, it's gonna be kind of dry. And some of this, there's no clear coat on it, is really going to soak it up. Hit up any of your edges. And that stuff first. 
and on the flat spot, keep this as flat as you can. Now with the car as faded as this one, I've got a little bit of wax on the pad now. So we're actually gonna start moving this thing the way it should. <laughs> with one as faded as this one, you're gonna be able to get a little bit more RPM. And you can hear it there too. Just kinda roll the edges softly. Always, always, always try to keep all your rags quartered up. The best quartered up rag you can have, the better. Whoa, watch this. <laughs> That's amazing. And if you could only feel how this is compared to watch. The minute I hit that line, it's over. So, that's that. I want you to show this up close. Well, we might not get as much more of it because we're out of... Maybe back up a bit because I'm going to spray that. Okay, so we had the camera battery give out. This happens to me on about everything, but the camera's cooled off now, and you can see that one spot. Woo, buddy! That looks good. I'm gonna finish this half for you, and then we'll do it to it, and kind of get back and show you what's up. I absolutely love buffing on these cars, throwing the cord over your shoulder. I forget a thing or two when I'm making a video because I'm too worried about what's going on there, here, and everywhere. And as long as you're careful on this edge here, I've tested it out. I can put as much pressure on this as I want. That's right, I didn't miss a beat. Show this up close if you would. These little marks you're seeing. Get a little extra on there and actually get them off there. That is imperfections in the paint because grit and sand and grease and grime has set on there. And when you wipe the heck out of it afterwards, it should come out looking damn nice. Keep everything looking good as you go. Not only to where you tell, can tell where you've been, but to where you can tell how it's looking compared to the rest of the car. You don't want to start getting different results and not notice it. If it's not looking even when you wipe it now, it's most likely it's not gonna look even later. Now that panel, freaking looking good. What I'm gonna do here is nail a halfway mark down here and buff the heck out of it. 
rub this stuff around a bit first. And honestly, I'd rather go like this than work with the whole hat. You can see it taking that clear coat peel type look right off. Could you show close up on that? Then marks just go like crazy. Give it some pressure. It doesn't take much, but when you got paint looking like that, I want to get it off now. That's what she said. On emblems and stuff, it's okay to shoot the edge like that. Use the edge of this to push against it a bit. Just don't push too hard. Yeehaw. I hate to be proud of what I'm doing here, but damn! my favorite things to do, no matter what. If it's hot out, I don't care. If I can still buff and it looks good, it is a fun, fun process to change something to look as good as you can make things look. Now, as you're going on this kind of stuff, be thorough. Do as much as you can at the same time. I'm doing everything but the bumper and then I'm gonna come back at it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do this bumper before I hit the top part, where you can see on a fiberglass, more plasticky piece like this, I just kind of let it roll over the edges and don't give it too much pressure. And that really seems to work well. After you do that, it's just important to hit up the flat spots again as well. Stuff like this, you're always gonna, you're gonna want to do by hand. Another warning, if you've never used this type of buffer, be careful. It can really screw your paint up. Pieces like this that have a grain to it, you don't want to get too much on because it's going to really throw the wax down in the grave. And a final on headlights. We are going to sand these later, but at the same time, I'm gonna do this one just to show you how I would do them. Okay, 